Touch your neighbor today. Say, it is not over yet. The best is yet to come. Amen, amen. We want to welcome every person that's here and that's joined us online. Those uh, leaders and pastors that have joined us as well. We want to thank you for coming and connecting with us and supporting us with your prayer, with your presence, and just with your emotional support. We want to thank you so much. And right now we're just going to dive straight into wor uh, the Word of God. And we're going to believe that God's going to touch you today. His Spirit's going to move today. That you're going to get baptized by the Holy Spirit. That your fire is going to be rekindled and renewed. And you're going to Tackle this life with a new fire, with new passion within you in Jesus' mighty name. Are you with me, church? Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Amen, amen. All right, let's go to Book of Ruth. And I'm just going to skip around. We're going to take the entire story of Ruth and take a few principles from that word, from, from the word of God, from that book that could help us to advance our Christian walk and our relationship with God further and to go further with God in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's start with chapter 1 and let's read. I'm just going to be skipping around a few verses. Just follow me. Verse number one, in a, day when uh, in a day when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in, Jude, uh, in Judah left his home and went to live in a country of Moab, taking his wife and two sons with him. Verse number three, then Elimelech, Elimelech died and Naomi was left with her two sons. Verse five says this, this both Melon and Kilian died and left Naomi alone without her two sons and her husband. And verse 6 says this. Then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. In this story, Naomi and her husband and two sons, they... The land of Israel begin to experience fam uh, famine. The land of Judah begins to, begins to is experience famine. There's a drought in that land. There's a shortage of food. And they decide to look for food someplace else. They're looking out for their own best interest. And they leave the land of Judah, the land of Israel. And they go into this land of Moab. And they... Uh, they leave the land of promise because in the land of promise there is famine. And they go to Moab. But in Moab things get even more difficult for them because her husband dies. Then her two sons die and she is left all by herself. See, Naomi left a, a, a promised land because there was a famine. But I want to tell you something. Don't leave your dreams. Don't leave your promised land because you're going through a season of famine. See, we all go through things in life. We all go through situations in life. We all sometimes get stuck in a season when there is famine. When we don't feel the presence of God. When we don't feel like God is moving, like God is doing something. We feel, we feel like stuck. When we feel like home group is not growing. When we feel like our ministry is not advancing forward. People are not getting saved. And not only people are not getting saved, the church is not growing. But people are beginning to leave the church. And we can come into the place of discouragement we can come into the place where we feel like we are in the famine but while you're in a famine while you're going through a drought don't make the same mistake that Naomi and her husband made leaving the land of promise leaving her dream leaving her uh, her place her ministry behind and going to some place else because there is a famine because when she leaves things don't get better. When you leave the presence of God, when you leave your dream behind, when you leave your business, uh, when you give the promise that God has given for your career and your business, for your family, and you leave just kind of to, to just to be passive, just not to be active, and just to live the life anyhow, just, just, just to flow through life without purpose, without meaning, things don't get better. In the process, it's not that leaving Leaving the land of promise will help you 
to get life better to find place to to be in a better place because there is no better place than in the presence of God. There is no better place than in the purpose there where God calls you. Even if you're going through famine, you continue on going because God has a promise on the other side. Amen. God will visit his people again. If you're going in a ministry and your ministry is struggling, don't quit. Don't give up. Don't just shift your passive mode to a maintenance mode. Continue to seek God the more. Continue to pray the more. Continue to see God's face the more because the better days are ahead of you. Amen church. <laughs> Moses he said in Hebrews it says about Moses that he chose rather to suffer with his people than to leave. Uh, he chose rather to suffer. Uh, he chose rather to uh, to suffer affliction with the people of God and to enjoy passing pleasures of sin. Many of you have gone through something in your life. Many of you have gone through disappointment with the church. Many of you have gone through disappointment uh, in, in your personal life. You prayed for something. Something didn't happen. Don't leave God. Don't leave His presence. Don't leave His people. Don't leave church. Don't leave because you're in a drought. Because God once again will visit His people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Naomi abandoned the land of promise and but what do you do if you find yourself in a situation like this what do you do when you feel like God has promised you uh, a, a, a prosperous life a life of uh, a life where you have more than enough you have a business you have a career will you be sponsoring the kingdom of God and support supporting missionaries supporting church projects of course supporting kingdom projects but yet you find yourself in a situation where you're struggling when you can't put when you can't barely pay your bills what do you do when when you've been praying for healing but healing doesn't come what do you do when you've been praying for freedom for so long and gone to this ministry and that ministry but freedom is not coming you are in a place of famine what do you do then in second chronicle 7 14 God gives us a scripture God gives us a, a, a blueprint he says that if my people who are called by my name humble themselves they pray and they seek my face then he says I will come and heal their land then God will come again and visit the land God again will come and visit the ministry visit your home group he'll come again come and visit your business your family your 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 your, your uh, whatever you whatever you are involved in whatever you're working with in Jesus name Naomi finally decides to come back into the land of Judah because she hears that God once again visited the land she hears that God again visited his people see if you stick around if you continue to press through if you continue to see God if you continue to seek his face God will never leave his people he will never abandon his people he will always come through he will touch you at the point of your need he will locate you he will bring people your way he'll bring ministries your way he will position people and resources your way and he will come once again and visit you if you don't leave the land of promise if you don't leave the place where God has positioned you and so Naomi he makes her she starts making her way back and she has lost a lot at this point she's a widow not only she's a widow she lost her two sons she's already at the age Bible says where she cannot bear any more children and in that day in culture not having children for a woman was a big disgrace she was a failure by all means and at time she was a failed person but she decided to come back to God she decided to come back to where God was moving she decided even in my disgrace I'm gonna come back because God is visiting his people so whatever you at in life whatever point in life well how doesn't matter how much you lost God is waiting for you to come back to him and he wants to touch you and visit you and I believe God's gonna touch you today by his spirit renew you rekindle the passion and fire in your life and you will be not you will not be the same in Jesus name amen church amen but when, Na when Naomi gets greeted, when she comes back, she says, don't call me Naomi anymore. Instead, call me Mara. For Almighty, verse 20, 
has made my life, has made life very bitter for me. I know there's people in this place and there's some people that I've talked through, through throughout this conference and they would come up to me and they, they ask me this, this, this question. How come I prayed for my mom, she was sick with cancer. We prayed and prayed and prayed and the church prayed and we called the elders and the elders prayed. And we went to this, ministry, this healing ministry and the other healing ministry. And how come that she still died? And, and, and you could feel and you can sense the bitterness and, and heaviness in the heart. Many questions. And, you, and, and, and then there's another person that I talked to. Their child, very young child, 11 month old baby that died. And they prayed for healing. They believe God. And you can sense that there's a deep wound in the heart. You can sense that there is a deep pain. Like how come? Did, how come this happened to me? I was Christian. I served God. I went to church. I even went to prayer meetings. How come this happened to me? How come my son overdosed on drugs? I prayed for him. I believed. And, 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 and there are people in this room where you, you have these unanswered questions. There's these mysteries in God where you're asking God, how come this happened to me? I believed in my life for prosperity, for my business to prosper, yet I found myself in bankruptcy. I believed for my ministry, for my home group to grow, for my church to grow, yet I find myself closing down the ministry or my ministry shrunk. I I believe God for my healing for my deliverance but it hasn't come for this long time what do you do in those moments what 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 do you say to those type of people and this and Naomi said God has dealt bitterly with me she was very disappointed her heart was was filled with with grief and sorrow she was deeply wounded but I want to tell you that whatever has happened in your life I don't know what happened and I don't have an explanation you will have an explanation one day when you go to heaven and God will reveal you his entire purpose but I want to tell you something that God is not responsible for it I want to tell you that God is a good God God he's a loving father and Bible says all good and perfect gifts come from heaven he has no sickness to give he has no death to give he has no disappointment to give this world is full of mystery. This world is, is full of violence and, 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 and anger and there's demons ravishing and raging throughout the earth and they bring in death, killing and destruction. And not everything that is today we, we, we understand and what's happening, why this person died, why we prayed for this person they didn't get healed. But I want to tell you we can't stop in that place we have to go back to the land where God visits his people and he answers his people once again amen church we can't get stuck in a place where things died because some of us are here we are 40 years old but we already been dead for 15 years for 15 years because we died when a promise died we died when something didn't go through we, we died when a prayer was not answered and while we're still living but inside we're dead while we're still going to our churches but we no longer have faith we no longer have that fire we no longer have passion and it's because our heart's been wounded and not healed it's because our heart has bitterness and we need to release and let go and stop holding God accountable for what has not been done and look forward to God what God is about to do in your life release God from all wrongdoing he's not responsible Refuse to curse God and instead worship Him. Job, he was a righteous man, Bible says. He, had, he, he was a good man. He was a giving man. He was an honorable man. He prayed every morning. Not only he prayed, he brought sacrifices every morning. Yet upon the righteous man, this came, came this calamity lost his children, lost his home, lost his wealth, lost his reputation, lost everything and even his friends that were trying to be friends they weren't really encouraging let's just say. In those moments you don't want friends like that. His own wife said curse God and die but Job understood one principle. I might have lost things but I can't lose everything now. I still, I'm still alive. I still, till my end, last breath, I'm gonna give God the praise. God is the one that gives and God is the one that takes away. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on in the spiritual realm. I don't know what kind of battles are going up in heavenlies, but I know God is on my side and I have to move forward. I have to look forward. I can't curse God and die. I have to lift him up and praise him in the midst of my storm. 
God wants to bring healing into your heart. God wants to help you to live again. God wants to help you to dream again. God wants to restore you. God wants to restore that passion in your life. And today, I want to pray with you. The message is not over, but I just want us to, just to bow our heads just for a few minutes. I know there's people in this auditorium in this place where you've gone through a lot of disappointments you've gone through a lot of pain you've gone through a lot of setback and today honestly you're having a difficult time connecting with God you have difficult time trusting God again you have difficult time standing in his promises you have no confidence you have no boldness because how can I I prayed it didn't happen I declared it it didn't come to pass but God wants to show himself anew to you he wants to touch you today and he wants to he wants to heal your heart and and bring you peace he wants his oil of the holy spirit to flow in this place and heal your heart because he's about to do a new thing but if he's going to do a new thing in your life you have to remove every barrier between you and god you have to move remove every resentment before between you and god in jesus name come on bow your heads in this place and let's just pray for a moment let's begin let's allow the holy spirit to minister to those of us in this place that have just experienced this disappointment in Jesus mighty name. Father we thank you Lord. We thank you that Lord your spirit is moving in this place. We thank you God that you're touching the hearts of people right now. Holy Spirit we ask you that you come with your oil right now and begin to heal the wounds of the hearts of people. Lord that you begin to Lord that those answers or that those questions why, why this, why that, that will begin to subside and take God and take back seat that right now Holy Spirit you will become real to us that your love will become real to us God remove every hindrance in our heart remove every resentment in our heart Lord so that we can trust you once again so that we can look forward to what you're about to do in our lives once again in Jesus we worship you God we worship you Jesus just in your seat for a few moments just let's worship him oh yes Lord Yes, Lord. Heal your people, Lord Jesus. Come on, just be willing to sing this by faith. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you for your spirit God that is moving amongst this place right now. Healing the hearts of people. I thank you Father that anointing oil is flowing in this place. And people are receiving a healing and a restoration in Jesus mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. Don't build memorials of what God has not done in your life. Instead of build monuments to what he is doing. Don't build doctrines to justify your disappointments. But take God at His word. Trust Him again. And watch Him be faithful in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Church, let's put our hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Next thing I want, to, I want you to see in this story with, with Naomi is that don't focus on what you lost. Focus on what you have left. She lost her husband. She lost two of her sons. One of her daughter-in-law 
stayed back but she still had one daughter-in-law I want to tell you that God is going to do a miracle with what you have left and not with what you lost God's going to come through in your life not with the money that you lost but with what you have left God's going to do a miracle with your children not the one that you lost but with the one you have now God's gonna do a miracle not with the leaders that left the church but the ones that stayed God's gonna do a miracle in your ministry not with what you lost and the years that you lost but he's gonna restore you in Jesus name he's gonna bring restoration in the mighty name of Jesus I want to tell you don't don't lose your Ruth because Naomi almost made a mistake she was begging Ruth to leave she said leave me alone stay back don't lose your Ruth because you lost your two sons keep your Ruth hold on to what you have left hold on to that little oil that you have left because Holy Spirit is about to take that oil and he's going to multiply it in Jesus mighty name come on open up your lips and begin to pray in the spirit of God begin to let the oil of God flow in this place Come on, declare the church saying. Father, we ask you come and do only what you can do in our marriages, in our families. Come on, lift your hands in this place. Begin to ask God to do only what you, he can do. Only what he can do. Say, Lord, do what only you can do in our ministries. Go, oh, Father, do only what you can do in our careers, in, in our businesses. Father, oh, do only what you can do. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, Lord, show yourself as a provider. Oh, show yourself as a God that still answers prayers. God that still slain giants. God that still moves mountains for your people's sake in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your faith that's rising up in this place. We thank you for your spirit that's moving in this place. We thank you, God, for your answers, God, that are being God, dispatched by your angels in this place. We thank you, Lord. Do only what you can do. Do only what you can do. In Jesus' mighty name, in the mighty name of Jesus, you can just take your seats for a few more minutes and we're going to pray. We're going to pray here in a bit. Don't, don't abandon your Ruth because you lost your husband and because you lost two of your sons. Hold on to the little that you have. Thank God for it and bless it. Jesus, when they brought to him only two, five loaves of bread and two fish, it was not enough to feed 5,000. It was not enough for breakthrough. It was not enough. But with that little, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't despise it. He didn't say, disciples, what, what were you thinking? What do you think was going to happen? He didn't blame anybody. He took it. He blessed it. He broke it. And he began to work with what he had. And we see a great miracle of 5,000 people, not including women and children being fed. God is about to do a new thing in your life. God is about to do a new thing with your children. He's about to do a new thing with your family. In Jesus' name. The little that you have, bless it. Give it to God and begin to work with it. Begin to work with it. With that little capital that you have in your business, begin to work with it. Begin to believe. Begin to pray and fast and see God's face. And you will see God faithful in your life. In Jesus' name.